absolutely. And, you know, some people on the chat are actually saying that they relate because they too are an introvert. That was from Kay. Um, and also Jess saying that she too felt like an outsider and thanks you for sharing that. And a lot of people say they know the feeling of not belonging everywhere. I wonder your own journey with maths. I've heard you say that at high school, you actually preferred English and drama. And I wonder, did you choose maths because it's an underdog? <laughs> uh, maths is certainly an underdog. I cannot question that. Uh, I, I think it's one of the most um, polarizing and in some ways alienating subjects out there. I had a colleague actually recently who told me maths is the easiest subject to teach badly, um, which I think accounts for a lot of people's bad experience of mathematics. I've met so many people um, down the years who, you know, once they find out what I do, I'm like, hi, I'm Eddie. Uh, I'm a mathematics teacher. Um, you know, I think Politely, they'll say, oh, I was never really into maths. If they're being more honest, they might say much more colorfully <laughs> that they really didn't like the experience. And almost always I find that it is not the subject itself, like numbers or patterns or things like that that they dislike. It's the way that they learned it. So I think that the experience personally through a teacher of encountering any subject, um, it does make mathematics a bit of an underdog in that way. Um, I guess though, to just return to your original question, that love of um, humanities, uh, English history and drama, for me that was about, you know, these are things that I love to learn, um, but teaching as a profession, as a career, was less about, you know, what I wanted to, uh, you know, develop and grow in the things that I love. It was really about interactions with students and helping them to grow and flourish and become uh, citizens who can meaningfully contribute to the communities that they live in. So in some ways, even though I know this seems nonsensical to a lot of people, um, and they've told me so, uh, for me, it was not that crazy or an outlandish a decision to, at a fairly late stage, decide to teach a subject that was not what I originally planned to go and teach. It's because it was about the students for me and the relationship with them and, and growing them throughout that time. So I know you are quite a devout person. Can I ask you, did you see becoming a maths teacher, I don't know if this is putting too strong a word to it, but did you see it as a kind of calling? Hmm. Yeah, look, I mean, uh, I mean, as you point out, I'm a Christian and as a man of faith, I think one of the most uh, profound things is that we talk about professions, um, but I think we also think about vocations and that's literally what the word means, the voca, you know, voice. It's what are we called to? And for me, I, I definitely did sense, you know, and this is part of, um, you know, a bit of tension in the relationship I have with my parents as I went through years 11 and 12. There was a lot going on in my family at that time, uh, but particularly, um, yeah, well, I mean, that, that was a time where uh, my mum was very ill, so she um, developed lung cancer and she passed away the year after I left school, um, but she, you know, throughout year 12, wrestled with me a lot about this decision that I was, you know, consolidating in my mind to move toward a career as an educator. And it sort of comes back to exactly what you said before. I thought to myself, what way can I meaningfully serve the people around me? That's why, um, that's why Christians believe there is um, work in the world is to serve the people around us, not for self gratification. And I thought to myself, okay, um, there's a bunch of things that I love doing, but a thing that I know I'm good at is explaining things and, and mentoring and, and helping people learn things. I actually thought that was a really common thing. Um, I remember being an army cadet at school and I sort of gravitated towards the younger cadets who did not know how to pitch a tent or how to shine their boots properly. And I'd say, look, let me show you, it's not that hard. And I loved the sense of um, growth that I could see. I found that really joyful to take part in. I thought that was very common and then I realized I had my friends help me see that's not as common as I thought and that was where that calling first I guess grew in my mind that this was something special to me that would enable me to give back to the community that I'm a part of. Do you think that the experience with your mum's cancer, did that help you develop resilience? It's it's a really tricky question to answer in some ways, um, even though I could straightforwardly say yes. Um, I look back and I think absolutely the times when 
um, I grew the most were in the darkest times that I walked through. I guess it's tricky to answer because I don't know what might have happened otherwise. Um, I can kind of guess, look into my reverse crystal ball. Um, I do know as the youngest child, and I'm a bit ashamed to say this, but my mum kind of babied me a little bit and uh, looked after me so well. And I think she, um, because I had some health issues when I was a lot younger, um, just really cared for me and was so tender and, and loving in so many different ways um, and had a lot of sympathy for the kind of like physical suffering that I went through as a little kid. Um, and so I think I had to grow up really, really fast um, and, and especially as my family around me aged and sort of moved on to their different things, the resilience that that experience gave to me was the only thing that enabled me to survive and be a you know a critical part of my family you know, moving through that grief. So I guess my short answer to that is yes, um, but I do wonder what might have happened otherwise. Eddie, I have to say, we've actually got three callers from India, which is super, super exciting. So hi, everybody. <laughs> Eddie, um, you started putting your lessons online in 2012. That's pretty much nearly a decade ago because of a boy who was sick and missing his lessons. But I wonder what kept you going beyond that? Did you get encouragement or did you think this is a great way to share that with everybody? What was the motivation? Yeah, it's a lovely question. I, I do think to myself um, with a little bit of embarrassment that I would love to claim credit for having had a very strategic plan for how I'd worked it all out. You know, here's my five year trajectory and the goals and targets I was aiming for. But in fact, uh, you know, I was doing this online and that student who you mentioned, um, he went on to graduate from school and I thought, oh, okay, well, the original purpose for me putting these videos online has kind of ceased is there a point? And it was actually, and this happens so often, um, it was my students who taught me. They really gave me a lesson at this point. They said, Mr. Wu, there are so many of our friends who are so grateful that they can actually, even though they're not here at this school, um, they could never have the chance to learn from you face to face. They can actually learn via, you know, these very simple, humble videos of, I'm not doing anything special. It was literally just my everyday classroom lesson and I just hit record on it. And for me to realize, wow, there's actually an impact that I can have beyond the classroom. Now, even just the 30 students in front of me, that to me is just mind boggling that I get to have a role in helping to influence them and, and help them grow and learn. And to know that I can go even further beyond that. I mean, the, I'm delighted that there are so many people from India. I happen to know that a lot of the, there's a significant proportion of the people who watch my videos from there and the US and the UK and pretty much anywhere else that English is spoken because uh, mathematics is a bit of a universal language. So I think it was that knowledge that something I could do that was super, simple, um, that was not kind of, I, I, there's nothing special about what's happening in my classroom. It's the same thing you would see if you walked into a um, hundred classrooms around Australia, around the world, um, where dedicated teachers are pouring themselves out for the sake of their students. It's not special, but opening the door to that experience through the internet, that's the thing which I thought, I can't close that now. I want to keep doing this. Well, it is special, Eddie, and I'll just read you out some of the things that are coming across at the moment. I mean, Joanne is saying that she relates to how you feel about being an Australian Asian and being perceived in Australian society, even though there we feel, you know, there are a lot of um, lot of Asians from all parts at the moment, but she absolutely feels with what you were saying. And, and Emma is um, in lockdown with her two boys, age nine and seven, watching from Sydney. So you're right. I mean, this, this um, virtual world really does create connections. Mm. I'm interested that you have more than 1.24 subscribers. That was last time I looked at least 60 million views. I mean, do you ever ask yourself, where is this going or when am I going to stop? 
Yeah, I, I do pose that question to myself every now and then. I mean, I'm a person who works with numbers every day. And yet, I mean, I, I teach at a very large school. Um, Traybrook Technology High School has 2,000 students. But except for when we have evacuation drills, you literally never see all 2,000 students in one place at the same time because even our very large uh, school hall doesn't fit everybody in. So when we have an assembly, some people are out doing other things while the rest of us are in there um, listening to speakers or seeing awards being presented, 2,000 people just staring out at them, it's enough to boggle the mind. Um, and to know then that the numbers go so far beyond that, um, really just, I mean, it makes me think about numbers in astronomy. It's like, oh, this star is however many millions of kilometers away. And you just kind of think for a moment, you reflect and realize, you know what, I have no idea what the, num the magnitude of those numbers is. Uh, and I guess for me, what it comes down to is even for the size of those numbers, even for the quantity, it's actually the quality that matters most to me every now and then. I'll get an email or a message from someone who said, you know, um, thank you for making these videos available. It's what helped me get through, you know, this um, challenging experience of a tough subject or, you know, our whole district was on lockdown and we didn't have online learning, but I could access your resources. To me, the difference I can make in a single life, that's the thing more than the size of the numbers um, that really motivates me and encourages me to keep going.